Hey guys, I'm Retro Nemo and welcome back to another chilling installment of Retro Nemo's Conspiracy Corner. Never before has such a work of pure propaganda infiltrated our American television airwaves and poisoned our youth. I'm talking of course about the Nickelodeon cartoon known as The Loud House. In the show, LinkedIn Loud is just your average run-of-the-mill little boy. He loves comics, hanging out with his friends, and just being a little shit. But LinkedIn is extraordinary in one special way. He's the only man in a house full of ten sisters. This of course is a clever metaphor for how the true power of the patriarchy is being blanketed by much louder left-wing groups. The political aspect of the show just might be its biggest downfall. However, that's the entire show's bread and butter, the gimmick of the ten sisters, each with their own stereotyped personality. One is a musician, another is a princess, one is a tomboy, one is a tiny Velma Dinkley, you get the idea. But these limited personalities made me wonder about the show's deeper meaning, and the more I think, the more I looked, the more I theorized, and I began to see the true intentions behind the show, the loud house, and they're not good. So let me dump some truth on you. Now don't think I can't hear you. I can. I can always hear you. I know you're probably saying something like, Hey Nemo, wait a minute. Now hold on. This show isn't dark at all. The Loud House is a nice family friendly slice of life that the whole family can enjoy blah blah blah. Well sure, you can enjoy it. If you also enjoy Marxism, that's right, time to drop some truth here. The show would like you to believe that the Proud family lives in some dumb state called Miskigan. Well, that part is true, if you believe in lies. In reality, they don't even live in the United States. But Nemo, if they all live in the United States, where do they live? Russia? Yes. That's exactly where they live. You see, the Proud family is not a family at all. When's the last time a family has had more than four kids? I mean, they're not even religious, come on. This is in the 40s, people, they take selfies. What we're really seeing is a Soviet group home. Back during the Cold War, group homes were popular government-mandated housing units where people were forced to live as a solution to overpopulation. This explains the extreme imbalance of genders in the house. They were notoriously gender segregated to guarantee maximum division and oppression. The only reason LinkedIn is even allowed in the house with the girls is because he's such a little bitch. Notice the background decor in their house. Every painting is a simple square, as true art and creativity is suppressed in their Soviet prison society. Rhett and Link is forced to live in a cramped small little closet, as it's all they can afford in their extreme poverty. All of the comic books he has are government mandated, with just the word comics written in plain font. I'm not even sure if there's pictures in there. There is no creativity allowed, but their education's even worse. Their classrooms are reduced to cramped underground bomb shelters, as they fear a nuclear attack from their American enemies. Each sister is only allowed one personality type, as creativity and rounded character traits were deemed illegal in Soviet societies in the late 1940s. It's a sad but futile existence for these characters, as they attempt to force a smile in these dark times. Almost every episode takes place in or around their house, as the rest of the world is simply too depressing or dark to visit. During the night, they can't even leave, as they have a strict government-mandated 7pm curfew to ensure no rebellion groups attend to meet at night. Landon seems to have adjusted towards his new life, as he fits the people he lives with with into the family roles he's never had. He calls his roommates sisters and even addresses the house wardens as mom and dad. Eager to keep his feudal happiness alive, they play along because any good Soviet knows a happy worker is a productive worker and he needs to be productive so the wheat fields can yield the best possible crop in order to feed their starving citizens. The biggest ploy to keep the lie alive is everyone playing along when Lincoln decides to bring out Clyde, his imaginary friend who he manifested in a state of extreme loneliness one day in their education bunker. Whenever a problem can't be solved or is too difficult difficult to handle on his own, he calls up his old pal Clyde, who's always more than happy to help. Never busy with anything else, always ready to jump aboard and help whenever asked. The perfect friend. Although this forced lie is not all laughs. Some of his fellow housemates get annoyed with his antics. Lisa, for instance, has a hard time hiding her sarcasm, as Lincoln addresses her as his little sister, despite her being 45 years old. She just is a little short, but they play along. And every day, the family acts out the motions of a sitcom life, pretending to have teenage problems and getting into wacky situations, just so they can keep the lie alive. It's the only thing they have anymore. And without it, Latchkey would snap and possibly start an uprising. And their Soviet overlord just can't have that. Just remember, in the loud house you can be as loud as you want, but no one will hear you. But I don't know, that's just a little theory. What do you guys think? Quite frankly, I don't really care. I know I'm 100% right here. So don't even try to challenge me. You better not even write anything in those comments down below. Alright, I'm gonna bounce out now before the FBI catches up to me. This has been Retro Nemo's Conspiracy Corner. Peace.